What does Britain's oldest lullaby have in common with murder, King Arthur, Halley's Comet, and these furry felines? Heroes, I'm Tempest, and welcome to Time with Tempest, where today we're going to be talking about one of Britain's oldest documents, and how significant it truly is. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel to see what hidden history I uncover next. Now, let's begin our story. Pice Dinogat, Britain's oldest lullaby, was written in the margins of a 6th to 7th century epic battle poem called A Gadadin. It has since been lost, but a 13th century copy exists and faithfully recorded the lullaby alongside the main text. It's one of the earliest surviving pieces of Welsh literature. The main text is quite significant, as it tells the true tale of Gadadin warriors who inhabited Northumbria in Scotland and are neighbors with Gwyneth. They gathered together with other warriors from Pictlin and Gwyneth and fought an epic battle at Cartwright, which is now North Yorkshire. Almost all of them died, but were immortalized by a bard called Anerin, who wrote the actual manuscript. Agadadan is incredibly significant, not only because it contains the only information on that battle in history, but it contains the first known reference to King Arthur, which of course supports the long-standing theory that he was indeed Welsh. A passage in Agadadan speaks of a warrior who, despite great feats, does not compare to a mighty warrior named Arthur. He pierced 300 most bold. He cut down the center and wing. He was worthy before the noblest host. He gave from his herd horses in winter. He fed black ravens on the wall of the fortress, although he was not Arthur. Clearly, Arthur was significant enough that the author mentions him by name as if everyone knows who he is, and holds him up as this untouchable warrior that all other warriors pale in comparison to. And given the time that Agadadin was written, it seems most likely that this Arthur is the same King Arthur we all know and love. Sadly, it is because of Agadadin that Anaran died. He was murdered by a lord who was slighted in the poem for not coming to the aid of a wine, son of a king, during the battle at Cotrith. Now, getting to the lullaby itself. As I said before, it was written in the margins of this epic battle poem, which may seem rather odd. It's a gentle lullaby, sung by a mother to her child about the father going hunting. And the title itself means Dinugat's Coat. It does have a rugged aspect to it because it's all about the father providing for his family with his incredible hunting prowess. So maybe, in a way, it does fit with the poem. The strength of men was a trait highly praised in song and literature. Just look at Beowulf, who is becoming a king all due to his own might and his ability to slay beasts. But the question remains, why wasn't this lullaby written on its own? Now, I actually studied medieval manuscripts at the Institute of English Studies in London, and I'll throw in my two cents here. It's very common to find other things written in manuscripts. Some of you may have seen the axe-wielding rabbits or jousting snails that grace the pages of some manuscripts and are called medieval marginalia. But you can also find written works, such as short music compositions, poems, songs, comments, and more. The author Anaran was a bard first and foremost, so it makes sense that he would scribble down a song, though his reasons are unknown. Maybe he loved it so much he wanted to preserve it. Maybe it was stuck in his head and he spaced out while writing. No one really knows. Now what we do know is the context of Agadadan is extremely helpful in dating the lullaby, as the warriors mentioned in the poem are only known in that one text, and therefore would not have been remembered centuries later. The details are so specific, they could have only come from a first-hand account, and it's probable that Anaran was actually at the battle. But it's likely that the lullaby is older than the poem itself. Regardless, dating it at the 7th century makes it the oldest lullaby in Britain. 
It's also extremely helpful in describing life prior to the 7th century in Wales, from the father's weapons, to where he hunts, to the animals he is hunting. So from a historical standpoint, it's a great contemporary resource to study. And linguistically, it's helpful in understanding the changes Welsh has gone through. But an even more interesting reason as to why it's so significant is the one that hasn't been explored until very recently. The word chluwin appears in the song. Chlu is often interpreted as lynx, especially due to its similarities to the old Gaelic word loch, which also means lynx. The presence of a lynx in the song, in reference to hunting, is something that's caught biologists' eyes. It's contemporary evidence of lynx activity in Britain, which helps them piece together a timeline before extinction. In the 8th century, the Venerable Bede wrote a poem, which included a passage warning Northumbrian shepherds to guard their sheep against nocturnal ambush and dark lions. The translation of dark lends itself more to an evil presence than the color. In the 9th century, a Pictish stone was created in Scotland, depicting a figure riding a horse with hounds, chasing what appears to be a lynx. This timeline is completely at odds with what places like the Scottish Wildlife Trust state. They say the lynx died out anywhere from the 4th to 7th century. If the lynx is gone, or incredibly rare, why would it be mentioned as something to be hunted in Wales? The father is clearly counting on catching a lynx because it's mentioned with other common animals like the boar. Additionally, why would the Venerable Bede warn Northumbrian shepherds about the presence of these lions a century later? And why would the Picts create a stone depicting it being hunted another century later? This evidence, along with more advanced radiocarbon dating, is actually changing biologists' entire view of the lynx in the UK. More research is being done, and now they think the lynx actually survived well into the late Middle Ages, especially in the Northwestern Highlands. If you're interested, there are several research papers on this subject, and you'll even see Pais Dinogat mentioned. It also challenges the notion of lynx extinction in other ways. In 536 CE, a chunk of Halley's Comet broke off and crashed into Earth, causing a mini ice age. Biologists assume that's what killed off the lynx, but because of the aforementioned evidence, it's probably just a case of overhunting and loss of habitat if they appear to exist well into the Ice Age. So while this lullaby is significant for being the oldest in Britain, it's much more important than we think it is at face value. So many people in all different sectors have benefited from studying it, and I think it's an example of how a lot of history can be overlooked just because it appears simple and isn't noteworthy. But all that aside, it is at its core just a sweet lullaby that many people find quite heartwarming. There was never any melody written down, so everyone makes their own interpretations. This, I feel, captures the spirit of the lyrics best. It's from the channel Will Walking, which I highly recommend, and I will link the channel down in the description below. Now, without further ado, here's Pai Stinoka. Pais di nogad fraith fraith, so gruin balawad ban raith. Wit, wit, wit o gaith, go hanon, go henin with gaith. Pan el aide da bi helia, chlathar ayusquith, lori en ela. Ef gel wi gun go gahuk. Gif, gaf, dali, dali, du, du. Ef chledi bis gun horog, mal ban chlach leu, leu iwg, pan el aid y dadi i wen oth, dwyth y gaeth pen i oog, pen gwyth oog, pen hirth, pen grig i afraith o fun oog, Pen piscor e ada dwenodd, O saud gyrraid aid y dadi ai gigwain, O wthoch a chlawin a chlinain, Ni dangau oedd na fai o'r adai.
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you just saw, please remember to subscribe, distribute your delight, or leave your calling card in the comments below because the YouTube algorithm gods demand it. Until next time, stay curious, history heroes.